What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 65 of the Around the Crease podcast. This week, we're talking about recruiting, a little bit about Michigan playoffs, and the transition from high school to summer. And we're starting now. All right, we're back again, um, back by popular demand, Coach Chris Garland of Detroit Country Day, and of course, usual, the co-host, Michael Ward. Guys, welcome welcome to the podcast this week. How are hey, you? Thanks for having me again. Appreciate it. Yeah, it was great It was great having you on the first time, and I saw uh, you you were uh, excited to get back on it, and it seemed like a few people were excited to have you back on it as well. Like People really responded to your first podcast, which we'll link to um, below for anybody who didn't listen to it, but obviously it was pretty fantastic to begin with. Um, and we're going to touch a little bit on recruiting, kind of like last time. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about the transition from you know that high school season to the, the summer season and recruiting season, but... Being it as it is, um, mid-May, or well, almost mid-May, uh, depending on when you're listening to this, feels fitting to talk a little bit about the playoffs. And I know I had Lee Roggenberg from Florida on last week, and he got pretty uh, animated <laughs> about the uh, FHSAA playoff system. And I saw you got equally kind of animated about the, uh, the <laughs> I guess, the MHSAA playoff system. Yeah. So why don't you kind of fill us in first on how does Michigan – kind of do its playoff system to begin with so now that lax power has gone away we use the michigan power rating which takes into consideration our record our opponent's winning percentage and then uh i'm trying to think of the other factor but they, they put a couple of factors in the hopper mm-hmm. to create the rankings for the region and then depending upon how you're ranked it, you, uh, you'll play a certain team like if we advance past the quarters we play for forest hill central uh, they're very good. We played them in the earlier in the season, did not win. And part of me doesn't have a – I've learned a lot now about um, the Michigan Power rankings, and there's now a disincentive to play people outside of the state. Like, it doesn't help me to play people who aren't in Michigan. So it so doesn't I, take a, into, into any team outside the state into account at all? Nope. You, it mm. it does not serve you in the rankings to play anyone in Michigan. I would have been better served playing – uh, uh, maybe not as competitive Division Two team, and maybe getting a win rather than playing a competitive out-of-state team. So if you think about it, it disincentivizes teams playing against better teams to get better for the playoffs. So I don't understand how that works. It should take into consideration all the wins I have and that team's record up to this point. Now, that would be challenging to do, so there needs to be I mean, a new national sort of system created like Lax Power uh, that really, if you think about it, what a tragedy that that's gone away. Yeah. It's really it's really hurt us here. Um, and, they, and Michigan used to use it to help seed teams. So now do I play a team from Ohio? No, I don't. I don't want to do that anymore. It doesn't make sense for my kids because if it hurts us, why should I do it? So and there are other teams weaker it- competition who are ranked higher than me who I, I, I think we're possibly better than them. I, would, I couldn't tell that we haven't played them, but it doesn't right. really help us. Does it take into any account the other team's strength of schedule? Because I know that was one of the things Lax Power was really good at. Is like you got points. Basically, every team got points based on the other team. Like, you know, if you played a team that ended up with 15 wins, you basically got a point for every win that they got um, in addition to – and I, I'm sure that trickled on down to – the teams they played and stuff like that as well. Like that, some of that, so that strength of schedule was taken. Is that taken into account in at your all? In region, it's taken into consideration. And I think that's done through opponents' winning percentage. So if your opponents have a high winning percentage, that means you're playing good teams, that's going to be in your favor. But I don't think they take into consideration strength of schedule. There's no, and I want to look at it a little more closely. And I, to be honest, I really haven't looked at it that closely. Um, I think it does do that. I just want I can't say for sure, Mike. Okay. So what I do don't you... think I don't think it took into consideration out of state teams though. No, not out of state right, teams. Right, not out of state. So, you know, Brother Rice played what, five, six teams out of state. There were very, very top five teams in Ohio. None of those matter. None of them matter. None of them matter. It's crazy. So that I mean, I think in Lax Power they used to put they used to include that because it was like a whole ranking overall as opposed to now it's just Michigan's ranking. So they yeah. don't look at any other state, which again, everything I believe in, it's going against every single thing I believe in because it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't promote interstate play to make teams get better. So 
I, but, I know it's just Michigan teams. And it's and also it was, sounding like it's almost incentivizing, like just beating up on teams that you may not like. Well, if you need the wins to boost your your rating for the playoffs, yeah. I mean, it's not going to help you once the playoffs come if you play a bunch of cupcakes and you go undefeated and then you get to the playoffs and get punched in the mouth. But depending on what your goal is that year, maybe you're like, well, we're not going to win state, so at least let's. Get, I don't know. I mean, but yeah, it sounds like it. So, what do you think is the most, uh, I guess, egregious errors? based on this new system. I think one I, I mentioned to you guys earlier, Cast Tech, a traditional football basketball power in the city of Detroit. They just started a lacrosse program, brand new. They were asking people for donations of helmets, sticks, you name it. They're playing the number twenty four ranked team, Brother Rice, in the first round of the state tournament. That's the worst thing I've ever seen in my lacrosse coaching career. Why would the state allow that to happen, number one? Number two, it's not good for lacrosse in Detroit. Number three, it doesn't help Brother Rice. Number four, it actually hampers the growth of the sport in the city of Detroit. And number five, why wouldn't someone say, hold on for a second. Let's figure this out. Let me call Coach Chawa. Let me see what we can do. We'll have the game one nothing. Cass isn't going to win. What can we do to help the program in Detroit grow and develop? And I, and I tweeted out, in 10 years, if we invested time, energy, effort, and resources into the program at Cass Tech, that could be a game played for the state championship in the state of Michigan. Instead, what do you do? If you crush that team right in the three-quarter game with running time, are kids going to want to play for a team that's lost by 30 goals? Yeah. No way. There's absolutely no way they would want to do that. So you crush the sport in, in the city where we needed to grow. So I, I mean, I couldn't be more disappointed that no one stepped in and said, let me call Tom Rashid. Let me ladies drive over there and say, this isn't going to work. Let's figure this out. Let's create an alternative solution to help the kids there. And let's not waste their time and money. Let's go down there. Rice will go down there. They can swing it. They can go down there. Like, it's not an issue to them. But what, is it, what does it cost Cast Tech to come up here, get transportation, get out of school to lose? That makes no sense to me. That, I yeah. mean, that, that made me really angry. A lot of people in the state are very upset. And the state association just needs to sit down and figure out the best system for a state tournament. Someone suggested you take the top 24 teams in the NPR. They play for the Division One state championship. Everybody else is in the all-come all Division Two state tournament. I said, all right, that makes sense to me. I'd rather play really competitive games than uncompetitive games. You know, I'd rather do that. That's where you see what you need to get better at. You know, we'd compete, and Mike knows this too, you know, in Michigan, you got Rice, CC, Heartland, FHC, and then everybody else is within two or three goals of each other. No one is that much better than anybody else. Uh, trust me. And then how could that state tournament play out? It would be a lot more competitive and fun as opposed to Rice beating people really badly in a couple of rounds. They'd get really good games for three rounds. You'd have to win and gut out games. Yeah. So that was the most egregious, I thought, egregious a violation, I think, of the spirit of the of the new rule, new uh, rating system. Now, for uh, people who may not know, kind of let them know, because like, there is a Division One and Division Two, and is it done by school population? Is that how you guys see the divisions are determined? You got it, school size. Yeah. So I'm guessing, like at Cas Tech, it didn't really matter that it's a first year program. It's like this school has a thousand students, so they f go into Division One. They didn't look it. at any any other qualifying aspect of that program. You got it. And, and I told someone, well, they should have gotten a waiver to play D2 as opposed to putting them in D1. So it can't be hard and fast where you have really big schools playing in D1. That doesn't make sense. You can look at your team and say, hey, we may have D1 size, but we probably should be in Division 2. So the, the manner in which they distribute, that doesn't make sense for a brand new program. That doesn't make sense no. to me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely one of those things. It seems like they're trying to apply a rule because obviously stuff like that was developed with football, basketball in mind. Those sports are very mature. Those sports yep. are, you know, a lot more divisions than just two in, in the in most states that, that play it to begin with. But they're trying to apply that mode of thinking like, oh, we'll just do it by school size because that's the most logical. It works everywhere else. I'm like, well, it doesn't, especially, especially for like you can do it in a state like Maryland who just, you know, they, they just actually broke theirs out. They used to have, what, 2 was 1A, 2A, and then it was 3A, 4A, and now they have 1A, 2A, they have 4. They broke them out, and that's not even including the private schools. Um, so, you know, it works in a state like a Maryland or in New York where the sport is mature and programs have it, but when you get to these states like Michigan where really the sport's still growing, 
it doesn't work. Like you can't apply that same policy to it because it, what's the incentive? I mean, I can't see Kaz Tech like you get. I mean, as the coach, that's got to be a tough game to coach to begin with. I mean, what, what do you tell your you kids do? before the game? Like, you, no one really thinks you got a legitimate shot. I mean, it, it would be the Mike Mike's repeat of Mike's favorite movie, Miracle. Oh, well, maybe not movie, real life thing, but Miracle on Ice, like the kind of thing. I mean, Brother Rice is destroying high quality teams that have been playing it for a long time this year. Right. It's going to be yeah. It's not doing any service to the sport in the state. That, that, that makes no sense. I agree with you 100%. I just wish someone would step in and say, we can't let this happen. You just Someone's got to say, Tom Rashid, who's the director of lacrosse for the MHSAA, the athletic director from both schools, got to say, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. And some boys, at, one boy at Rice who's going to Rutgers texting and said, hey, what can we do to help the game there? Is there anything we can do? And that, what does that say about the kids there? They're awesome kids. Yeah. They have great families. I, I tell you that right now. And they want to do something, but they also know this doesn't help us. It doesn't help them. How no. can we help them? And they're yeah. good people. They're great people who want to help the game, but Ajay doesn't want to coach that game. He doesn't yeah. want to coach. It doesn't help him. He'd rather practice. Yeah. So he'd rather practice. Like, hey, how can we help these kids and coaches get up to speed in a year so they're competing against other programs as opposed to getting beaten really badly by Rice? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh... – I really got nothing else to say, Michael, because it's just, I, mean, well, I think we've co- kind of covered most of it. It's really, right. it shouldn't well, this happen. Is, this is everything that I've talked about that will, will, will hamper the growth in the, in this, in the sport, especially in the Midwest. Michigan's one of the deeper States. Now imagine, let's look at Missouri where MICDS and it's, you know, maybe there's one or two teams that sort of can compete with them, but then there's like nothing. Yeah. All you do is when you beat up on these teams, what kid wants to go there to get beat up on? Nobody. Or or you get the competitive kid. Here's the other the flip side of this. You get a kid who's competitive and gets his keep shoved in his face. Well, you know what? These are young men. You know they might not want to get it shoved in their face. There might come an elbow. There might come a high stick. There might become a fight. There yeah. might you know. And then it gets a black eye. Like oh look at this, uh, this team and this team. They're bad for the sport. They're fighting. And you're like well, you know what? These are young men. Yeah, tempers and, flare. And, right. And and you know they're... if you're beating on somebody, even if you're trying not to. It, it it'll it can happen and it can get somebody hurt. It could, there's so many bad things and this is the part about the Midwest especially that's because that I care about is that it hurts. Uh, and I, and I was saying it, we've said it before and I was talking with coaches in Illinois this past weekend while we were there. Uh, they just said, "Give me the top 16 teams, put us in a thing, and then put everyone else in another bracket. Then when you win the, that bracket, move up the next year. Keep and keep having teams go there." He's like, "But you know there aren't even 16 teams deep, deep 16 teams deep enough in most of the states." Yeah, I mean, and it's just and again uh, the size thing. I mean, Forest Hill Central is a, is a Division Two. Yeah. Um. Uh. So are you? Yeah. I mean, you know, when 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 Country Day is on their game that th- they could play with anyone. It shouldn't be based on your size. It should be based on the skill at this. Uh, like we said, it's not football. It's not basketball. Yeah. It's skill. It's a different animal. And it, all it does is hinder and hurt the growth, um, which is something obviously I'm passionate about. So that's why I knew Chris was very upset about it. I was upset about it. Um, and I know other States are the same things are sort of happening in other States. Yeah. So There's growing pains and, in- a lot of states because it's a lot. Of, the game's growing so fast, and Very state associations right. aren't don't know what to do. They, they they don't have enough experience to know like nope. how do we handle this. So they're just applying the policies. Like, well, it's worked everywhere else, so we're going to do it there, forgetting the fact that you know football has been played for forty, fifty years, and it's mature. Like most programs have that, and it's mature, so it works. Like you don't really have. I mean, you get blowouts in every sport, but right once you get to the playoffs, generally not so much. Whereas in Michigan. And other areas, like you, you, you can get the blowouts, and it doesn't do anything to help the growth of the sport. But like, how's this playoff team? Because other right. people from the outside, are like, well, you know, that should, and like, you don't get the top to bottom. You can't really apply that size class until you know the sport becomes mature enough to where it becomes enough parity to where you can actually legitimately have a good first round, second round matchup. Like, it's just, uh, I don't know what it's going to take for state associations to figure it out. I mean, it sounds like lax power going away, really, at least hurt you guys the most and there's not really a good i mean there i think the biggest problem is there's not one that's been adopted yet i mean you have inside lacrosse that's doing their thing 
Um, I don't know how many schools in Michigan have input the stuff there. You got max preps, which I know some schools do, some schools don't. You have the new lax numbers, again, hit and miss. I mean, there's not one spot where everybody's putting everything in that even a state association is adopting. I mean, New Jersey is coming, came up with their own um, for this year to seed their, their playoff system. So that'll be interesting because how's that going to work? I mean, they have. So that won't bit. count other, other states either then? Um, yeah. I mean, I, 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 haven't mean, that's dug, a problem. I haven't dug enough into New Jersey's system um, to know how they, what they're waiting. But, yeah, they're not. I mean, they came up with their own um, to do it. So I think it was applied in other sports, so I don't think it's a new new system. But then again, I saw I read in the newspaper today, it popped up in my Google Alerts that I guess Michigan is adopting this Michigan power rating for yep. other sports moving forward. So they must like it enough to think that it's worth someone thinks it's working. So, so listen to this. I was talking to the women's coach at Country Day, and do you know how they determine seedings for the women's lacrosse tournament in our state? They pull names out of a hat. Oh, the, you, were, you were serious about that? Well, yeah. I thought you were jo- – I seriously thought that was a joke. I was like – I thought it was like, oh, it's that bad he's making a joke because that's what it seems like. That's literally how they do it? They pull him out of a hat. Oh, my God. So, the two best teams in Division Two, Marion and Detroit Country Day, will play each other in the second round of the state tournament. Oh, my that God. That is – they're not on either side of the bracket, second round game. How – Someone wins, someone loses. That's it. Like your season's over in the second round. That's it. You're done. How does done. that? How does that? How does? How does anybody look at that and be like, "That's a good, good idea"? Like, it's a terrible idea. Like, how does that? How does that? I, I'm, I am stunned. I really thought that was a joke. I can't believe that's you know. Oh, it's, it, it is 2019. <laughs> and the head coach, he was right. coach at American, was played at Hopkins. She told me, and I said, "You're kidding." She said, "No." They pull them out of the hat. I mean, if nothing else, just have the coaches pick it. Like, that's at least a better system. Like, have all the coaches sit around in a room and argue for an hour and be like, this is how we're going to, you know, we'll figure out, like, here's the number. Because most people could at least agree on, like, the top Did you just freeze on us, Mike? Right, top eight. We'll see the top eight seeds, and we'll seed everybody else. Yeah. I mean, you know, and all right, think about the advantage we have. Country Day is about a quarter of a mile from Marion. And the game's at 5.30. Like, all our boys are going over the game to cheer for our team. We're going to go over to support the girls, you know? Yeah. We'll be there. So that gives us an advantage. We'll be there supporting our women's team. But that really hurts the growth of the sport. You know, if you can't advance. And soccer, women's soccer is played in the springtime, which hurts the growth of the game. Yeah. You know, I don't like that. But it's, it is – I can't change that, nor would I want to change it. But I, I just think the women's coaches should sit down and say <laughs> – Let's find a new system. Like this does not work. Yeah, it the seems best, like that that one should be pretty obvious, but like that's got to change. <laughs> that that's got to change. The best team should play for the state tournament. That's it. Bottom line. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, um, now that we haven't fixed that system, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Uh, yeah, move, move, moving on. Like, cause I hopefully that. I mean, you got to figure. Uh, I I can't. I got nothing else on that one. <laughs> um, so I know last time we talked a lot about uh, recruiting. That was kind of the gist of the last conversation. I know you had a few more things you wanted to say. So what what what? I guess kind of let you lead the conversation here. What were your thoughts on? Because now we're kind of transitioning. Like the season is ending. Everybody's probably you know. There's some states that are already done. Everybody's kind of starting to get their eyes on those cross camps and showcases, and that that itch is starting to creep up again. It, it, it is. And I stay in touch with a lot of boys, not as many as I would like to. But I know they're busy with their seasons and everybody's really excited for the summertime. And I keep telling kids, your primary focus should be on your high school season, whether it's going great, maybe not so great. You know, I think you should focus on the task at hand, getting better, helping your team in any way possible and finishing out your season in a really positive way. And then when that's over, and obviously I talk to a lot of the kids in the program uh, about the summertime and, and over the next several weeks, it's like, okay, now we have to start formulating a plan for your summer. What are the things you need to do? And, and I felt last time, you know, I spoke in generalities, but now I want to be specific with people who may not have a recruiting coordinator, who may not play for a club team that's going to the com- competitive events and need some advice about – hey, this is my plan for the summertime. You know, I listened to this, I heard about this, and this person, his club team, whom he works with, they have pretty good success. And so maybe if a, if a kid or a family listens to this, it helps them get a plan, get their thoughts on paper, 
and then reach out to coaches and hopefully play well and then ha- have a really positive experience this summer, next fall, and then hopefully find the right fit for themselves. Hopefully. That's the yeah. hope, always. Yeah. So what, so what is the best plan for a kid to come up with? All right, so this isn't, and, and, you know, I, I was thinking about this, and while I don't have all the answers, I think the system that we use works well for our kids, and I think it works well because I'm intentional, Jake's intentional, and we put the kids at the center. They're our primary focus. This isn't about, well, look at where we place kids. Like, we are as excited for a kid going to Michigan as we are for a kid who decides not to play. And, and I want to tell you guys this. A mom who, whose son used to play for me, she texted me. She's like, hey, thanks for the advice. Like, uh, you know, this wasn't for our son. And they actually quit playing club lacrosse. They quit because I said, if this isn't for you, don't do it. <laughs> don't waste your time or money, you know, like if you don't want to do this. And, yeah. you know, and Jake and I were laughing because, you know, you know, a lot of people who work for clubs would not be employed if they, if, you know, they told people, don't do it, you know. Uh, and we tell people, if you don't want to do this, don't do it. Like, we're not here for registration numbers. We're here to help kids find the right fit. And if you don't think this is the right thing for you, don't do it. And his mom thanked me. And this mom's son, she plays, her son plays for us. Little little brother plays for us. He's a great ball player. And uh, she was, like, appreciative of it because her son, older son's going to Michigan. Great student. And he said, well, we got into Michigan. We're going to do that. And he's going to lead a good life. And we're like, yeah, and absolutely. So I was just thinking about this in terms of age levels, like 20s. They are alive. It is. It's go time for twenties. Yeah. You know the rubber's hitting the road. You know you've got to start making decisions. We got to get on the same page. We have to figure out places we need to contact. Twenty ones. I wrote down. This is opening night of the show. This is opening night, and you are going to be reviewed. Uh, you may get bad reviews. You may get some good reviews. You may get some ambivalent reviews. Uh, but you will get invitations to prospect days. We all know that. Um, 22s, I said, it's the dress rehearsal. You know, you got to figure out uh, how this looks, how you feel. Do you like this? You know, how did you play this summer? What do you need to get better at? How did you play against some of the best kids? And then for 23s and younger, you just got to get better. You know, enjoy your time with your teammates. Have a good summer. Uh, Hopefully you enjoy the people whom you're playing for. Hopefully you go to really competitive events. But I hope you have fun. And I hope you I hope you enjoy going out and competing. I hope you love the game like I love the game, like all of you love the game. I mean, that's my hope for the 23s. And just, you know, you have one question to answer as a 23. When you're out there in the summertime and it's hot and you play five games, you have to ask yourself just this one question. Would you rather be somewhere else? And if you would, then you should be in that place. But if you're like, this is my element, I love this. I want more of this. I enjoy this. You're probably pick. You probably made some good choices. Like this is this is for me. I really enjoy it. Now, granted, in the summertime when it's hot, um, not all of us want to be out there. But if you end the game like, man, I really enjoyed that. That was a fun weekend, mom and dad. I really like the guys in my team and your folks who have invested time, energy, effort, resources into this. Will probably say, yeah, you're with good kids. Your coaches are good people. They're good role models. You're getting better. The event was competitive. You know, I like the people whom you're, you know, you're you're with in the team. Their their parents are good folks. Then it's like, okay, we we got something, you know. So that's that's sort of like setting the stage for those different age levels. But like big picture now, like honing in on the recruitable athletes, twenties and twenty ones. Like as a team, like parents, caregivers, coaches, recruiting coordinator, whomever, they got to figure out your academic, personal, athletic goals. Like, what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? Um, what kind of school do you want to attend? What kind of, what are your interests? You know, if you say to me, you know, coach Garland, you know, I don't know what I want to study in school right away. I say, let's, let's pump the brakes. Like this isn't a rush. We're not in a rush. We could pick this up when you're ready to sort of make a decision. When you tell me what your interests are, and then I can start narrowly tailing your list for you as opposed to let's just go to events. Let's just play and see what happens. And I hate that, you know, if we were to like, hypothetically speaking, let's say, I'm not married. I don't have any kids. And I said to you, hey, Mike, Mike, let's go to a Detroit Lions football game. There'll be 30,000 single women there. I'm going to find someone I'm going to spend two to four years with. You would look at me like, Chris, that is crazy. <laughs> Terrible plan. But, you know, think about people who play lacrosse and club teams. You're like, I'm just going to go to events. I'm going to see what happens. And if nothing happens, 
that it wasn't meant to be. Like, well, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, you didn't reach out to people. They didn't know you were interested. You may have played well, but no one knew you liked their school. So if you weren't proactive, how are they supposed to know you were interested in their program, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we tell kids to fill out questionnaires, to send their highlight videos. I follow up with coaches. And then you go out and play to the best of your ability at events where we know they're going to be. Or if your top five choices aren't going to be there, we sort of send you to their PDs because you have to do that. You know, for example, guys, you know, a good friend of mine, Peter Lasagna, he's at Bates. He doesn't get down south very often. But, I mean, sometimes his assistants get down there, but he got down there last summer. He's a great guy. He's a great coach. He stays up north. He knows where his, he knows what side his bread is buttered on. But we had a kid who was interested in Bates. I'm like, Coach, can you get down and watch him play? He's like, Chris, I'm going to get down there and watch him play. Uh, if you tell me he's interested, he's a good kid. He liked his highlight film. He had the grades. He got down there because we were proactive. And the kid's going to Bates to play. Yeah. So – you got to be proactive, right? You've got to make sure the recruiting coordinator knows what your interests are, is going to advocate for you, has coached you, knows your folks, has communicated with them so you can create a plan. You know, that, so that, that's the first thing, you know, academic, personal, and athletic goals. Like, what do you want out of your experience? Um, I'd be a little remiss because generally this, I've already received it several times over Twitter. The number one question by far that I always get, mostly from parents, is how do I pick – where to go like par uh, parents are for for parents like you know between prospect days and i mean the the litany of you know various camps and showcases and stuff like there's so many options for parents and players over the summer um most parents it's just it's crippled by choice they they yeah. don't know because i mean every, everybody touts that they have this roster of coaches this is the coaches that have come in the past these are the ones that are coming there this year like how do you guys? How would you recommend a parent who's going about this be like? All right, how do I figure out where I should be sending my kid? Because as you said last time, you know, you got to maximize your money. Like you don't don't send a kid to a bunch of D one schools if they're not a D one player. You're right. That's a very good question. There, and that really depends on your son's grades, his interests, and all the things your recruiting, recruiting coordinator, parents, college counselor, head lacrosse coach have discussed, hopefully, in your journey along uh, this recruiting new recruiting process, right? There are a couple of real, and I always tell this to kids, if you know there are lots of colleges that are going to be at a showcase and it's somewhat affordable or it's affordable or you've budgeted for it, I like New England Top 150, I don't know if you have heard, know that showcase, but you're there with the coaches from schools in the NESCAC, New England, liberal arts colleges, really competitive schools, and they're coaching your kid. And they're playing for people who are head coaches in that league. And one of the young men in our program, sorry to make this sometimes about what I do, but I just I think anecdotally it's important to note, yeah. he, he, he's going to Swarthmore, and he was being coached by the head coach at Bates, and he told him about the kid I was just talking about. He said, hey, this kid in our program really likes your school. And he's like, oh, great. That's good to know. He's like, I like that kid too. And he recruited both kids. So if you can find events like that where you know they're going to – and again, like you know where they're going to be. I know that's really hard for people sometimes, right? Yeah. Uh, and sometimes those events speak for themselves. You know, uh, blue chips come around. They've turned the corner a little bit. New England Top 150 is very good. The prep school lacrosse showcase is very good. That's very selective. Yeah. The D3 Midwest Showcase at Ohio Wesleyan is very good. And I'm always talking to people about where they're going. So that really is the responsibility for people who play with club programs to speak to that director about, hey, where should we go? Can you do some of the legwork for yeah. us and do some research? And, and I do that for the kids in our program. And I tell them, yeah. this is going to be really good. Or they ask me, hey, is this worth our time? Because you do receive so many of those mailers, emails about prospect <laughs> showcases, and some of them aren't worth it. They're just not worth your time or money. Some of them are. And those change from year to year. Now, I will say this. If you're a rising senior right now, uncommitted kid, and you've narrowed your list, you just have to find a way to play in front of the coaches who are which school is your interest in? You got to find a way. And for some people, it's, you got to get on campus. Mm -hmm. You know, like let's say Mike Ward's son is interested in Ohio Wesleyan. I'm like, listen, Mike, you're close to Ohio Wesleyan. Get in your car, go to their PD. He's like, great, no problem. Or you're close to Denison. Get in your car, go to their event, and see what they have to say. Get, get their feedback, or they'll tell me like, Chris, we like them. 
or like, you know what, Chris, not a fit for us right now. And that's it. At least you know, so you're not chasing them from event to event. So yeah. good question about talk to your recruiting coordinator, narrowly tailor your wrist, list, excuse me, and make sure that person responsible for helping you is doing their job because you're paying for it or have paid for it. Yeah. And I mean, in my experience, usually at those prospect days, there's usually more than just the actual, the college that you're at. Like my experience, like I went to a high point camp and there was coaches from like Duke and UNC, like they have other guys helping out. So you're not getting seen by just one school generally at those things. I mean, I can't speak across the board because they're all run differently, but for the most part, they usually bring in other coaches to help out. So you're getting more than one set of eyes, you know, you might think you're playing for Ohio Wesleyan, but there's probably a couple other coaches there that will increase your chances of getting noticed. It may not be a school that you may have thought of before as well. That is a valid point. You can always be pleasantly surprised. Always be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So, Michael, as he, he mentioned, your kid, I mean, you're, you're making this transition to, uh, to spring as well, and I'm sure you, with the amount of parents you've talked to based on <laughs> previous podcasts, like, is there any questions that parents have asked you that we could get Coach Carlin to ask, answer? Well, the whole um, – and I think, Chris, we've talked about it before. What could, what could a player do on his own? Does he start sending his tape or video to coaches that he's interested in and just – does he – does he just say, coach, my name is so-and-so, I'm this, I'm a 21, here's my tape? Is that, you know, people are really, um, uh, the question I get the most is, what's allowed right now? Yeah. Can we reach out to coaches? They can't reach out to us. Does D3 coaches change by D1, D2? That seems to be the mystery that I keep getting the most questions about. I've gotten these questions from coaches. Like, well, we don't know what to do. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I've been on college campuses talking to coaches and I had to turn and stop. I'm like, I'm not talking about my son, but I'm, somehow if I'm talking to you, like, and all of a sudden my son sends you a, a tape or, you know, video, is there a, did I just break a rule, you know, being a journalist here and, and doing that? So the, and when the coaches say, I have no idea, I go, okay. <laughs> And then asking for sort a of friend. A, right, right. You know, because I'm there, and then like one coach looked at me and said, "Are you wearing a wire?" I'm like, "Absolutely not." And he's like, "Don't worry about it. I'm not going to say the school." But he's like, "Don't worry about it." Um, but that's the question: Do the kids send their own tapes? You know, because some kids I know, especially uh, going into the senior year, uh, you get a lot of kids who stop going to to teams you know they decide oh this isn't for me anymore i'm just going to go to prospect days or whatever so if they were you know going it on their own what would you say they should do the the, if, the player if you've decided and it's interesting because i i played against a kid who left cherries went on, went about it on his own good player uncommitted and sometimes i think for some kids that can work as long as you have a plan you better have a plan but if you don't you better have someone who's advocating for you or making sure that people know you're still interested and you know the kid i'm talking about uh played for the juice cherries at carmel and i kept in touch with his folks i kept in touch with his family i kept hammering him hey what's going on let's stay in touch and i said hey the school's still interested in you. He's like, and it's a, it was a Big Ten school. He went out there for an official visit and made him an offer. And that was in January. We kept hammering. Just, we kept we kept staying with it. Now, sometimes if you go it alone, you, lo you lose someone who keeps nudging you along the way. Like, hey, let's you can do this. Let's keep let's keep figuring out. Let me keep making calls for you. Let me get your film out there. Let me talk to this kid about this coach about your character. You, and it, it happens. You know, we only have right now, and another Carmel kid, my, my favorite kid, Jordan Walker, I mean, just one of the best kids I've ever coached. He's going to Notre Dame. I don't know if he wants to walk on or not, but he's he's the only guy, and then there's one more kid who's trying to walk on at West Point. After that, every kid in our program is committed. Now, the kid I'm speaking about, whose name I won't mention, it's not necessarily important, he left two series. People leave their programs every year. It's not a problem. He's uncommitted. He's a good player. He was probably better than the kids we had in our uh, one of our teams. But who was going to the map for him? Who was staying in touch with his folks? Who was helping him find his list? All those things you got to keep doing. And we had a kid just recently 
and this is sort of my experience, played for me, played for my 19 white team, just committed to Tampa, and it was that was in May. In May. Mm. But if you're going it alone, back to your original question, Mike, you got to have a plan. You have to touch base with your college counselor. You have to identify schools that are a good fit for you. And that person will help you narrowly tailor your list. And now you've got to talk to your high school coach about, hey, what's a good fit for me? Where can I play? So you've got to work with your college counselor, high school coach, and family about putting together a list of schools whose prospect days you're going to attend. That's the people you're going to work with very closely. If you said, hey, no more club across from me, I'm done with it, not for me. And we all know that happens to kids. But if you decide to go it on your own, you have to work very closely with your college counselor and high school coach the summer going into your senior year and the fall of your senior year to make sure your ducks in a row and you're doing these things. And these are, I wrote this down, these are things you got to do. You got to fill out questionnaires. And if you're done with club ball, you've got to go to prospect days. And you've got to get bang for your buck because you can't. Uh, let's say, for example, hey, I want to go to a school in New England. Uh, I like the NESCAC schools. I want to go to Middlebury, Bates, Bowdoin, Trinity, Con College, Hamilton. Listen, unless I'm really wealthy, those are really hard places to get to. Like They're not easy to get to. i got to figure out where they're all going to be, right, what camp they're going to be in attendance at. Maybe they're all going to be at Yale's PD in the fall. And I can call the staff, hey, where are you going to be this fall? And I have to make a couple of phone calls. My head coach can help me too. And he can say, hey, this is where they're going to be. This is your opportunity. And then, guys, people forget, like, you have to play well. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I was having to like, dude, you didn't play very well. Like, what do you mean? Like, you did not play well. If you're an attackman, you didn't score. It means you didn't play well. So what do you want me to do? You know, there was a kid, and this is one of my favorite kids, the brother Rice attackman. And I know Coach Warner, Georgetown, one of my favorite coaches. And the kid said to me, Coach, I love Georgetown. I'm like, great, I love Georgetown. I went to Georgetown. He's like, can you talk to Coach Warner? I'm like, yeah, he's the best. I love him. I'm like, Coach, what do you think? He's like, he's not good enough. And I'm like, Coach, watch him one more time. He's like, Chris, you got it. I'm like, what do you think? Still not good enough, Chris. I'm like, ah. Oh. That was it. He watched. <laughs> he's like, not good enough. We don't like him that We like him not that much. I'm like, all right, Coach. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So, Uncommitted kids without a club team, have a plan, college counselor, high school coach, narrowly tailor your list, figure out where the schools you like are going to be, go to those schools, play in front of them. I I think kind of touching on that, I have to ask because I have to imagine the recruiting process is a can be a very discouraging one because there's a limited amount of spots and way more players trying to get those spots. So for a player, like if you're a player out there and he's listening, what – kind of makeup do you think a player who has the ability to go it on his own would what would that player look like because i've imagined like you got to be comfortable with hearing no and not taking it personal and getting discouraged yeah or not so, hearing back that's almost worse than hearing no because at least then you have closure but not hearing back i imagine you just don't hear back a lot yeah so same kid i'm talking about attack my brother rice this, this is a hilarious story goes on an unofficial visit to a school i'm not gonna tell you the name of school Unofficial visit, loves it. Coach doesn't call him back. There's nothing. Zero. And I'm like, got to move on. Just, he's like, really? I'm like, that's it. We're, we're, we got to move on. If he didn't call you back, he's not interested anymore. I don't know what it was. Maybe the visit is going to go up. I don't know. He's like, he's like okay. So I, I wanted to talk about this too. And there was a great article in the Times about how following your passion is a bad idea. It's a bad idea because when you put all your eggs in one basket, when it becomes too heavy to carry, you drop it. So it's better to put your interests in front or before market demands because I'll be honest with you guys, you know, people are going to respond to all those invitations from prospect days and they're going to, you know, chase the dragon, go to every event when you're like, man, this is not in your best interests. But to answer your question, Mike, and I want to do a better job of that. The makeup of a kid, the makeup of a kid who has who who gets the results that he want he or she wants. You're determined. You're organized. You follow up. You stay on top of it with your high school coach and college counselor, if you're, and your and your parents are involved. The one thing that drives me nuts, and and parents are like, well, this is my daughter or son's going to college. It's there. They got to take care of this. I'm like, that is crazy to me. <laughs> like that's so nuts like if they don't do it it's not getting done i'm like 
All right. When when would you apply that logic to any other situation in their lives? And this is the most one of the most important. You're like hands off. All of a sudden, your whole life you've been hands on parent, and now they're like going to college. You're like, I'm out of here. Like <laughs> that's like crazy to me. I people say that to me. They say that to me. I'm like that. I'm like no. You got to be in the loop. <clears throat> And you've got to be involved, and they may not like you being involved, but they'll really appreciate it. But you just can't let them handle this on their own. Like, you are nuts if you just say to your son or daughter, This is you're going to college. I'm not, I went to college. I'm out. You're like, All right, then it's not going to get done. Yeah. Unless you're a so driven, you know, highly motivated kid, which many kids are, but they need some nudging. They need assistance. They can't manage this on their own. No one can manage this on their own. Like you said, Mike, like the disappointment. Like high school kids can't manage that. There was a kid I coached. He went totally dark on me. Just like didn't return my text messages. You know, I, and I, I was texting his parents and said, hey, what's going on? He's like, you know, coach, he's very upset. You know, the schools didn't like He didn't get in this place. I'm like, so what? Let's keep grinding here. And he just committed. I'm super proud of him. And it was the place we talked about before the summer started because, you know, it all works out for kids as long as you have a plan and you have people going on the map for you. That's when it works out. Yeah. So I don't add, I don't I'm listening. If you choose to go it alone as a kid, I coach again recently did like you may have success. You may not have success. But, man, it's always good. And Mike knows this. I tell us to parents, your only job as a parent is to make sure you've you've had people who have your kids back. That's it. Advisor, teacher, coach, college counselor, you got to like acquire those people and you got to stay in touch with them because the more people that have your kids back, the easier life as a parent is. It's just, it's just easier. It's better. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you're not going it alone. You need, you're going to have to have a support system of some sort, even if it's not a club program. You need, you need other people in your corner um, to help you out or at least keep nudging you and. When you don't hear back, when you don't get that call back, to be like, all right, let's move on. The, no, the next one. Let's try the next one. Just keep the grind. I mean, exactly. you don't give up after you don't score the first goal. You keep, you right. keep shooting. Well, there's one thing I want to that, that I want to address because it's the um, which I prefer like talking to Chris about um, when you're at some places when they're like, oh, we're gonna make you D1, we're gonna make you D1, and 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 I've and I've seen Chris flat out say, you're not a D1 player. I don't know if everyone says that, uh, and that takes and that takes that takes a little self realization for yourself too. Like, you know, I have a child, and I sit there and say, "What do you want to do?" and and we talk about it. And I say, "Well, you're not you're not at that level," and he's like, "I know," and you know, fine. There's a lot of people who keep saying we're going to get you go to D one, and I think that's the crazy uh, craziest thing that happens is this D one D one D one D one thing where as Chris said it before in a speech that he gave once that I literally think I had a tear in my eye because it was so honest. Uh, when he said, you know, if you don't eat, drink and sleep lacrosse D one, you'll hate it. Like that's what it is. So that's the, the one thing, you know, temper your expectations and, and be real with yourself. So that's, that's one of the things I, I try to tell parents. I try to basically say what Chris said when parents ask me the same thing, I'm like, and I don't want to tell a parent their kid's not D1, but I'm like, you know, you ever looked at D2 or D3 or, you know, I always ask the first question, did he wake up in the morning with a lacrosse stick in his hand? They're like, No, I'm like, that's pretty much D1. So that's the one thing I want to always, every time I can get a chance to say that, I want to get that out. It's not all about D1. Yeah. It's it's about playing lacrosse and going to the best school you can if you want to play lacrosse. You can go and play club lacrosse. You know, you can, you can go to Indiana and play club lacrosse and get a great education. You can go to Clemson. Uh, I know a kid who's playing at Clemson on the club team. He has two division brothers who both played Division One. They're both pros. And he's, eh, I didn't want to do that. He plays at Clemson. He's having a blast. Yeah. So there's a spot for you if you want to do it. Yeah. I'm always a big proponent of use, it, use the sport to get where you want to go and don't let the sport use you. And that's lacrosse or any other sport. Like if you have the opportunity to use lacrosse to get somewhere – and get an education because you're that's going to last you a lot longer than the sport does. I mean, that that funnel gets gets narrow and narrow as you go up the chain. I mean, where's where's how many opportunities are there after college to begin with? So what are you going to do right. when those four years are done? Like, yeah, you played, you know, you played at Hopkins, you played at Duke, you played at UNC. But what did you get out of it? Did you get what you needed to get out of it? 
once once you were there. And if you didn't, if you hated four years, then what was that? What was that really worth? <laughs> right. The, the 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 thing I keep getting brought up to me, um, talking with actually some of the Long Island parents that I was talking with, and um, Nescac kids who are going to the Nescac schools. Uh, they're, they're all say the same thing. It must be a slogan. It's, you know, it's not about the next four years. It's about the next 40 years. Um, and, and a big thing that I learned about the long Island kids, I, you know, this is probably Maryland kids too, but they're, it, it, it's almost in a choice like this when they're going to schools, it's like Ivy leagues, but we're not getting into an Ivy league. Um, NESCAC. It's not like we're going to go, I mean, and I don't want to put down any school, but it's not like we're going to go to high point because it's division one or we're going to go to, you know, um, Furman because it's division one. It's like, okay, we didn't get into the Ivies. We're going to go to the NESCAC schools because those are the little Ivies because it's about the next 40 years. Uh, so that's what I, you know, these are kids who could probably play anywhere in D1. They, you know, it just didn't fit this way. Mm -hmm. And they choose D3 or they choose those NESCAC schools because you'd be crazy. <laughs> you'd be crazy not to. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you get into one of those, you go. I mean, I don't, that's my feeling. You know, I don't want to put down the other schools. There are a lot of great schools, Haverford College, Swarthmore. You know, there's just so many great schools that kids should take a look at if they're a good fit for them. Um, but even like I said to you the last time we spoke, if you're a Michigan kid, public school kid, and you're going to live in Michigan, your family's from Michigan, and a good time to you is deer hunting, bonfires, and going up north. You should probably stay in Michigan. That's probably who you are, right? You don't. You don't need to go. You don't to want to. Go, you don't want to go to you Hopkins. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to Hopkins. Like you know, maybe some guys in the Hopkins team are cool with that. But if that's who you are, like that's who you are. You know, that's fine. But know who you are as a person, uh, what your interests are, and we're not going to put a square hole in a round peg to put on our website to make us feel good. This is about your journey. It's your decision. It's about your family and what's doing what's in your family's best interests as opposed to making us feel good. Like you said, Mike, you know, a lot of places say, we have this kid going, we're going to, it's like, listen, I don't say that to anybody because that's crazy. I can't deliver on that. I just can't deliver on that. Uh, we can, what we can deliver on is being committed to your kid, helping your kid, being committed to your family, and getting your kid better at lacrosse, and hopefully he has a positive experience. That's all we can commit to. That's Those are the only deliverables. Exposure, coaching, uh, highly competitive environment, and affordability. That's what we hang our hat on. That's it. That's all we can guarantee. Yeah. I can't guarantee someone will play Division One lacrosse. I just can't do it. Yeah, you're not giving no, out the scholarships. <laughs> right. You don't control That's those. <laughs> and, and that was one of the articles that I wrote earlier before the season started was – when I put the difference between playing high school and then playing travel, there's a different level, you know, playing travel to simplify it. I always put when you're playing for your high school team, you're playing for the name on the front. When you're playing for a travel team, it's almost you're playing for the name on the back. It depends on what you're doing. Uh, a good travel program, I think, helps you get to where you want to be as opposed to you making the travel team the big name. Uh I know Chris is involved with the travel team, but I'm just saying that's that when I tell parents, I said, what's more important your, to the travel team? Is it your son is the most important or the name of the travel team is the most important? And I always say I've been affiliated with God. I, I, you know, I've been around at least 10 different organizations and some are one way and some are the other. And I've seen the good. I've seen the bad. I've seen the in between. And that's my first thing I tell a parent when they ask me about a travel program. What is their mission statement? Is it about we've won all these tournaments or is it we're going to work with your kid to do the best for your kid? Um, and some parents like to have their kid on a travel team that wins everything and they like to talk about it. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. You know, that's fine. But when the time comes and they're saying, uh, well, you know, they said they were going to help us out. And I go, well, how can they help you out? There's, you know, 4,000 people. They, they they can't give you the personal thing. They win tournaments. This is great. So that's I'm an advocate for parents, uh, and, and I don't have an allegiance to a, any team, um, you know, and and it's about the best thing for your child. I just so happen to be able to work with Chris, which has uh, been great, and you know I tout Chris. I wish you could. I wish he could be cloned and, and brought to every place else so everyone could have this. I mean, I swear to God, I've said it to Chris before. If I could have videotaped 
this the the speech he gave a room of parents and just sent it to every lacrosse it, it was an eye opener um but that's the that, that's what i tell parents i'm looking out for you look everyone has to do their own due diligence it's their kid it's their money it's their this so do your own yeah don't trust anyone else to take care of something you can take care of especially like even talking about videotaping you know when they hire these video the, the videographers at these tournaments it's just a wide angle lens and they might like, spot shadow your kid for a second. You can't even see it. Take your own video in your hand or hire someone who will do it for you. I mean, these are simple things, but I always think you should be more proactive on your own and work with who you got, like Chris said. So that's, again, I'm sure when parents are listening to this again, I'm going to get more calls and I'm going to say, just let, I keep saying it over and over. I keep hammering it over and over. Do the best for you and your child. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. I mean, you know, I, I always tell Mike, and, and I was talking to a dad at Heartland and a dad at CC and a dad at uh, Forest Hill Central, and I said, how can I help people in our state? And I said, listen, let the word get out that you're willing to help people. And people who are listening, I told Mike, tell them to give me a call. That, I mean, it, it, they may not like my, my feedback. It's pretty <laughs> honest, you know. That's the problem. People yeah. can't take the honesty. They don't <laughs> like it. And, I, you know, there was a great dad I was talking to this week. He used to play for us, phenomenal guy. And he said, you know, this is my son's dream. And I said, that's crazy. You know, like, listen, man, I'm just going to give it to you straight. And Mike knows this. I tell people this all the time. It's like, hey, Coach Girl, I want to play Division One cross. I'm like, all right, freeze. H hang with me right now. Let's find you on Notre Dame's roster. Let me find you. Find yourself. Like, find yourself right now. Like, oh, look, this a Michigan kid, Carson Cochran, Under Armour All American. Are you an Under Armour All American? No, you can't play there. Let's go to <laughs> Georgetown's roster. Find yourself. Oh, Peter Thompson, Under Armour All American, two time. Are you a two time All American? No, that's not you. You know, and they're like, man. Like, listen, that's not personal. That's not personal. That's not a knock against you. That's just Kevin Warren, Kevin Connery, Jerry Byrne, Coach Corrigan, Pat, you know, Pat Myers, Nick Myers. Look, look at their rosters. Find yourself on that roster. If you can find yourself, great. Like B.J. Farrar, long stick midi at Penn. He was a four-time yeah. first team all Baltimore Sun. I think the, there weren't there are like five guys to do it, and they're all in the Hall of Fame, lacrosse Hall of Fame. Yeah. Like five guys have done that ever since the first four team first time. That's unbelievable. Like he's a starter there. I'm like, hey, I want to play at Penn, and he plays. Like, are you BJ Farrar? You're like, no, not. Like, then you can't play at Penn. <laughs> That's not personal, unless you're like, hey, my dad's a billionaire. Then you maybe look at Penn. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not knocking. You know, you always coach play there. at USC. <laughs> right, right, thank you. I'm not knocking the coach there, Coach Murphy. I'm not knocking him like he do that. I'm just saying, hypothetically speaking, right, maybe if there's something exceptional about you. And it's funny. Dom Starge told this story about a kid who played for him. He sent him, like, highlights. It was his hockey highlights. And they were phenomenal hockey highlights. If there's something exceptional about you, for me, if I see a kid who's a midfielder, 5'10", dunking a basketball with two hands in the lane, I'm like, all right, that's exceptional. <laughs> or you're turning a kick 70 yards running through defense like that's exceptional we kind of like this guy's athleticism you know that's something special if you can do something like that like if you could not like shoot threes like come on <laughs> but if you're coming in the lane two steps hammering that thing i'm like we want to take a harder look at that guy you know yeah. so if you can do something like that and maybe you're not like the guy on those rosters um maybe mm -hmm. it's for you but man if you find yourself on a roster probably a good fit for you you know yeah. probably you could have some success there and that's, I think, uh, the, determining, the determining factor. And, and dad's like, well, if you don't go to Rice or CC, is D1 out of the question? I said, no, it's not out of the question. But you've got to have certain accolades because when I see a good kid at Division II level, I'm like, man, that kid's a ball player. Like, he can play, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, he's going to be an all-state guy. And that's what you have to be to play at that level, the best of the best. Yeah. So kind of like, like I, I know people are like, okay, Coach Garland, like, what do I got to do? I'm a 20, 21 You've, you've got to fill out questionnaires, and I know that creates maybe some more email tra traffic. Have a shared family lacrosse email address. Have, have one so you're not, it's not in your personal, personal email, which you can get jump, you know, jammed up with spam. Fill out the questionnaires. I was sitting in Brandon Child's office last year. Great guy, great friend of mine, great coach, outstanding program, one of the best people in our sport. 
And he's like, let me look at my spreadsheet. These are the people that have filled out questionnaires. And it was like right there. I'm like, okay. He's like, yeah, we look at them because we need to know where they're going. And if we get a critical mass of boys, we're going to be in an event. We go to that event. If like 15 kids are interested in New York are going to this event, we're going to go there. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. He's like, yeah, we, we have to do that. We have to separate kids from the general interest pile to the somewhat interested pile to the very interested pile. Like we got to separate the piles. Yeah. So if you fill out a questionnaire, we go watch you play, you follow up with us, you move from the general interest to the very interested, and then we narrow our list of guys who we're going to recruit from that interested group. Like we don't want, you know, ghost candidate, you know, stealth candidate. So that's the first thing you do. And then you send them your schedule via email and you follow up the week before. Coach, just want to follow up. We'll be on these fields. Here's my number. This is my coach's contact information. Uh, please follow up with him or her, you know, after the event. And then I tell people this. This is how you know you're getting your money's worth because you people are stroking checks. You know, for us, I, I mean, it's an investment, but some programs are many thousands of dollars. So, all right, how am I getting my money's worth? Did Coach Garland follow up? Is he in touch with my folks? Is he doing what he said he'd do? And if he's not, he's got to be held accountable. She's got to be held accountable. You said we're going to do this. You didn't follow through. What's the deal? And like I rue the day where Jake calls me and says, I'm not doing my job. That's a deeply unpleasant conversation. <laughs> Jake, I mean, Jake, when he gets mad, uh, listen, he's got a long wick, but I don't want him getting mad at me. That's a lot. He's one of my great friends. I don't want him getting upset with me. So I just do my job. <laughs> and, I, and I've told people this, too. If you're out east or in the Midwest or in the far west and you come across a school, it doesn't have to be a school you like. It could be, hey, Mike's in Baltimore this summer. Hey, Mike, let's go take a look at Hopkins. Urban school, medium-sized university, park the car, walk around. What do you think? Not for me. All right, fair. Let's go to Goucher. What do you think? I like this place. Maybe you would like it, maybe not. Let's take a look at Towson. I don't like this place, Dad, or maybe not for me. Hey, uh, let's go to IU for the day. Oh, I like this place. And then it's like, Mike's like, hey, my kid likes a big school. MCLA may be a good fit for him. Yeah. And you're like, all right. You know, he doesn't know he wants to major and wants to major in business and wants to be an accountant. Like, listen, I want to hit him in Sydney. There's no accounting major there. They, just, they don't have it. You know, but IU has got a great business program. And, and you know, I'm fortunate, guys. I worked at independent schools for the past, you know, 14 years. And, you know, last the last several years, when schools come to visit, I go to all their visits. I take notes. I go to the open houses in the college open houses, and I grab brochures. I talk to college counselors. Why? Because that's the expectation people have of me. And I hate this when like, oh, that's a good school. Well, how do you know? Tell me something about it. Tell me something intelligent about Hope College. Tell me something intelligent about Calvin College. Tell me something, Chris Garland, for five years <laughs> in college. And you know what I can say? I got my notes to my computer because I went to the open house because that's what Jake expects of me. That's what the families expect of me. And that's my job. I'm compensated to make sure I'm in the know about all the schools in our state, about schools our boys are interested in. Like, all right, Duke University likes you. You should probably go to Duke. Like, you don't need me. <laughs> like, ah, Lars Tiffany called me. Like, great. What do you call me for? I would call him right now. You know, Andy Shea called me. Great. Uh, you don't need me anymore. Later. Have a great life. Right? But, man, it's like, Coach, Coach Garland, tell me something about Middlebury. Like, listen, I went to their presentation. I spoke to their admissions rep. I know their coach pretty well. I can speak to you about for 10 minutes about Vermont, you know, what it's like there, what the experience is like there as a student. And that's what the job is, you know. Yeah. That's, that's what I think families should expect from the recruiting coordinator, right? That yeah. guy's got to or, – or person, whomever it is, has got to know that or be ready to say, hey, let me do some research. Let me get back to you. But also, I've coached every high school boy in the Juice Cherries program, everyone. I know him. You know, I know him pretty well. So, or at least I know their folks pretty well. So that's an advantage I think we have. But also, I know other great programs. They have people in place to help their kids. And there are a lot of great club lacrosse programs out there. You know, a lot of great programs out there. So yeah. that person's got to do that and, and take pride in that. And I think we do. Yeah. Um, I know we want to wind down, wind down here because we're, we're approaching an hour. But I wanted to kind of hammer in real quick on, because you mentioned the questionnaires a couple times and how college coaches are kind of using those to kind of figure out because uh, you mentioned like they use that to kind of figure out where they want to go. And I think that's one thing that parents and athletes might not get like because, yeah, there's a lot of options for them to attend. But there's that same amount of options for all those college coaches to attend. And it's not like the recruiting budgets for those lacrosse programs are millions and millions of dollars where coaches can, you know, jet set across the country, you know, 
to to attend all of them. They are picking and choosing which events to attend and which one to send their assistants to attend as well. So filling out those questionnaires will help those coaches know, like, hey, these, you know, we have a lot of kids at the, you know, Baltimore Summer Showcase that are interested in our program. Maybe we should send someone there. Yep. I mean, I think that's something like people, like, for as many options there are for the players and the parents, there's the same amount of options for college coaches. And there's a lot of demand because, you know, as you well know, there's a lot of those camp or uh, showcases that that's how they, that's how they sell it. Like we yep. have this list of college coaches and that's how they're selling it to parents and players to show like, this is how, you know, it's worth it to attend here is because we'd get these, this list. I agree. And we're working on something to help boys in the Midwest who really can't swing getting out east all over the map to these PDs because it's really hard. It's mm-hmm. really hard for people to get there. But I agree with you 100%. Like, if you're not and, – and I didn't really want to say this because I don't think it's – I don't think it's fair, but I think it's – I think you both of you would agree with I think if you're playing for a club competing at the most selective events, you're at an advantage. You, you, I think you guys know that. Like if you play for Long Island Express or yeah. Team 91, people are going to watch you play. You play for the Crabs, FCA Maryland, Laxachusetts, Mesa Fresh, West Coast Stars. <clears throat> like you go to an event, you know people are going to be watching. I think Mike and Mike, you know this as well as I do. What about the kid who's listening to this, the family listening to this, who doesn't play for one of those? Pro- those are the folks that I genuinely care about and want to help out. Like Chris, we don't play for you. We we can't make your team, but we still want to play college lacrosse. Like okay, you can. There's a pathway for you. You have to have a plan. You have to talk to your high school coach, recruiting coordinator, college counselor, narrowly tailor your wrist list. Excuse me. Figure out where those people are going to be, and that's what you have to do. Don't deviate from that plan. Don't be like, well, we're going to Carolina's prospect day. Listen, brother. I don't send kids from the Juice Cherries to that event. I'm like, ah, if he if you could play there, Coach Bresci would have called Jake. He would have called him. Yeah. You know, and he's looking for a certain kid from a certain program. Look at his roster. It's pretty clear who he's looking for, right? But if you're in that kid, hey, I play for a local program in the state of Michigan. I want to play college lacrosse. What do I do? All right. If you want to play at Davenport, go to their prospect day. You want to play at Hope College, which is a place I'd recommend. Go to their go to their prospect day. Contact their coach. See when he can see you play. He generally watches Michigan lacrosse. Mm-hmm. But if you're like, hey, I want to play MCLA, contact the coach of the program. You know. But if you're not playing for a very competitive team at the most selective events, you have to be very intentional, more proactive. You have to almost work a lot harder. You you have to work a lot harder. To be totally honest with you, and that's not bad. Yeah. But you got to work hard. You got to be intentional. And you've got to make sure you're aware of local events where there are coaches and schools that are going to, that you're interested in that will be attending. And like the last thing I think it's so important, you have to do well in school. I'd rather tell a kid you should take a, an ACT or SAT prep course rather than go to four prospect days. Like that, unfortunately, it is you know that that's what it is. Do well on that. And find something you're very interested in outside of school that you care about that you can lose yourself in. And also, as a young man or woman, you know you should find a way to serve your community in some meaningful way, right? And start your freshman year in, in high school and do that thing. Dedicate your time to that thing. Invest your energy in, in that thing you're interested in and can lose yourself in that makes your area or community, town, high school better. I don't care if it's politics, left, right of the political spectrum, could be homelessness, it could be whatever, right? But lose yourself in it and invest in it and like see what comes of it. To be able to write on a college application, this is what I did with my four years in high school. This is what I accomplished, right? This is was something I care deeply about. Last thing, super important, read, read, read more, invest your time in reading, Put your computer down. Put your phone down. Pick up a book. I always give boys book recommendations. Mike knows that. Like you need to read more. I don't read enough, and I read a lot. You know, I need to read more. So if anyone takes anything from this conversation, one, you can always hit me up. You can always ask for advice. I'm always available. I'm here to serve Michigan lacrosse. Here to serve Midwest lacrosse. Two, 
your son or daughter needs to read a lot more. Three, they need to figure out what they care about outside of school that makes their area better. You know, be a better son, you know, daughter, you know, brother, sister, like, you know, be a better community servant. Like, just focus on those things. And if this lacrosse thing doesn't work out, you'll be all right. Yeah. You'll be all right. That, that, I think that is the perfect way to end. But where can people find you online if they do want to hit you up? Because I think it's one of those things like, we will probably have a conversation similar to this um, in the future. So, like, anybody who has questions, I'm sure I would love to hear from you. Mike would love to hear from me. Like, ask us your questions, and we will either give them to Coach Garland or someone else in the future. But, Coach Garland, where can people find you online if they want to reach out to you personally? Coach Garland1. Uh, it's on Twitter. But, again, a buyer beware. You don't like the Jets, Mets, or Knicks? Just <laughs> mute it. Like, I'm sorry. Like, go away. I've told people that. that buyer beware. <laughs> Jets, Mets, Knicks, you don't like them, hit the road. I can't help you. That's it. Jet football season comes, a lot of Jets talk. You don't like it? Sorry. Beat it. That's all. But always, like, you know, Scarland at dcds.edu, email me, or chris at cherrieslacrosse.com, email me. And, again, you know, I moved out here to teach and coach at Country Day, help Midwest lacrosse, help Michigan lacrosse, help Michigan boys, help Midwest boys and girls find homes. Uh, and advocate for them. Mike does a great job of that. He's he's phenomenal. You guys are great. You help Midwest Lacrosse. We're in the Midwest. Let's figure out a way to work together as we we're doing right now to help boys and girls. Right, that's our job. That's our mission here. Is people work with young people and try to, and care about them deeply. Like, like that's the whole point. You know, that's the whole point for me. That's kind of my mission. Could have done a lot of things in my life. I made a decision to do this and. I don't regret it because that's what I think I do really well. And I'm not patting myself on the back, but I, it means something to me. You know, the kids in the cherries mean something to me. Obviously, the kids at Country Day mean a lot to me. And kids from all the high school programs in the state whom I've worked with, I care about them want to help them. So that's what the point is. That's that's sort of my mission in life. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm happy to pat you on the back for you. You don't have to do it yourself. Uh, Michael, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at MFWCHI, or you can email me at mward at laxrecords.com. And you can find me, obviously, at Lax Records on all the social networks. So, everybody, again, if you have questions, feel free to hit up any one of us um, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, however you want to reach out to us, because we'd love to hear your questions for, I'm sure, a future podcast, because recruiting is going to be one of those things that's a topic that will never die, and there will always be questions. And no matter how many times we'll answer it, we'll answer it again, because there's always the next crop of kids and parents coming up that haven't heard and don't know, because... Most people don't have the opportunity to do this more than once. Most people don't have the opportunity to do it once, much less more than once. So it's not like there's a wealth of experience from parents that have done this. So we're more than happy to hear from you and help you guys out. So everybody, have a great week. Take care, guys.